this is going to be part two of how to solve a three by three by seven. Part two is the fastest part of solving steps for me and my method. I can generally solve the final three layers in about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, depending on how fast my recognition is. And it is grouped into three sub-steps. Corners. We're going to solve all three corners and about two algorithms generally. Then you're going to parity the edges, fix the edges, which we'll go over in, in a little bit more detail later on. And then you're going to solve the edges in generally two to three algorithms. Though the fewer algorithms you use, the, lot, uh, the harder it is. It gets, starts to get pretty complicated later on. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to solve all four corners with the, one of the algorithm, one of the three corner switching out in this case the clockwise one which the link I will have in the description for what I do and then I will also explain it as I go so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check each layer for corners okay first thing I notice is that all three layers already have two corners solved which means they're next to each other like they should be so I what I would do is I would put those into the back and I'd do the algorithm which is left, reverse, and M, up, right reverse, down to, right reverse up, right reverse, down to, right to. And in one algorithm, I solved all of my corners, except for the parity one which will get fixed in a second. Okay, I, I solved all of my corners, but for the sakes of this tutorial, I messed it up a little bit on purpose to show you in a second example. This one has these two layers, the top and the bottom layer have the, all the corners solved, but the middle layer only has two solved. So in this case, you're gonna wanna do it a certain way, okay? because you can have three possibilities, no corner solved, all corner solved, or two corner solved. For no corner solved and all corner solved, it doesn't matter how you're oriented. I could do it like this, I could do it with it like this, I could do it like, like this, because no matter what, if you have all corner solved or two, zero corner solved, when you do the algorithm, you'll end up with two corner solved. But when you only have two corner solved in the layer, you're gonna put them on the right side, and then you're gonna do the algorithm. Okay, and that will leave you with two corners on all layers. And once you got two corners on all layers, you just do the algorithm again. And that will solve all of your corners in two algorithms. The same thing can be done with the edges. Generally speaking, you can solve these two layers in two algorithms, and sometimes you might have to use a domino algorithm solve the final layer but so the first thing you're going to actually do though is you're going to check for a parity which means you're going to check each layer individually for see if they have proper orientation or a proper permutation which means they're a normal algorithm could solve them the first layer isn't because all the edges need to go in a zigzag pattern the second layer isn't either but the third layer is. The third layer is always going to be never going to have a parity. But the second two layers both do. So in order to fix this, what you would do is first you'd find two colors. In this case, I'll use red and red. Line them up. And you're going to use, in order to fix this, you're going to use the red edge from the bottom. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to switch these two red edges with these two red edges. And that should fix your parity. So you're going to bring that edge out of the bottom layer with the algorithm from this step one and then you're going to replace those two edges with those two edges and then you're going to put your piece back and that should solve your parity problems okay and the next step would be to start solving your edges and in this case I have a Z on the bottom layer and a counterclockwise on both of the top layers. 
So what I would generally normally do is I try to fix. I'm not really too good at this yet because I've just started really practicing the method a little over a week ago. But um, generally, I would position all the ledges to where I can do one. I can do a corner switching algorithm or edge moving algorithm, and it would leave them all in the same case to where I can just solve them all with one final algorithm. And that takes a little practice getting used to. So for now, you basically just focus on trying to figure out, just practice the final three layers. So first, let's... figure out how to orient it. Okay, well, since you have this on the bottom, if I was to do a clockwise rotation of three right now, it would solve the green side, and it would mess up, it would not solve the orange side or the blue side, and therefore it would leave a counterclockwise on the bottom layer, which is what's on the top two layers, which is a clockwise on the top two layers. So, Right now, I can do a counterclockwise right here. And it will leave me with a clockwise on all three layers. So now, if I was to do the final algorithm, even though it looks like it's all mixed up, both all three of these layers need a clockwise rotation of edges. So if I was to do this clockwise orientation out permutation algorithm right now, it would solve all of my edges. So let's do that. Oh. And that is all my edges solved. So let's let's scramble the edges a few times to do give you a few more examples. Now we got another new case. So let's figure out. Okay, so the bottom layer needs an H perm. Okay, so that means doing either a U or a U reverse would give me a U or a U reverse. The next layer, the other two layer, and so the top layer needs an H perm as well. So the top layer and the bottom layer will get it solved the same no matter what. So in order to do this, let's look at the middle layer. The middle layer needs... Blue needs to go there, so the blue middle layer needs a clockwise rotation. And if I was to do a clockwise rotation right now, let's see if... Let's do a little um, thinking and see if it would leave me clockwise rotations on the two H perms. So orange would come here, green would come here, red would come here. So it would leave me clockwise rotations on the H perms. So right now, I would do a counterclockwise rotation. Okay. And now, me with a certain new one. Okay? I'm just going through different examples right now to show you basic steps to solve it. So now, blue needs to go there, orange needs to go there, and blue needs to go there. So if I was to do a counterclockwise rotation, I would solve all three layers again. Okay, 
in order to get past the confusing parts, you could always solve the bottom two layers like this, and then solve the top layer with domino algorithms. I will use a put a link in the description of where you can get a list of domino algorithms. They're going to be at the very bottom of the page under section phase four, saying it'll say solve the edge pieces of the top layer. And I'm not going to go over the parity algorithm for this video because you can look up the parity algorithms on YouTube, and there's many videos on parity algorithms on YouTube. So, but that's basically how I solve the 3x3x7.